Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video where we see who did well in the Midnight Mule Mini League and then what my plans might be for Game Week 5, which is another 10 days or more away. Top scorer for Game Week 4 was Lee Highlands. Alison Wonderland's the team, very good name. With 106 points, they're currently in 6th in the league. So they triple Captain Harlan for 60 points and then with Alvarez and Foden, that means that was that 79 points was gained from just Manchester City. Then apart from that, Embremo for 8, Madison for 7, Udogi for 5, and that's it. And then on the bench, they had Rashford for 7, but Rashford away to Arsenal. Who would you have played instead of Rashford? I mean, who do you bench instead of Rashford? It's like, yeah, that's fine. So very, very good. Well done. And obviously, probably most of us wish we'd treble Captain Harland. So that was a brave call because, of course, he could have got nothing on a single game week. Top of the league at the moment is it's either Jevon Blackman or Yevon Blackman. I don't know which one it is. SS, feel free to put in the comments how I should be saying the name. 83 points. They're currently on 300. And this is their team. So they had Harland for 40, Captain. Alvarez, 14. Well done for choosing Alvarez. And Bremo, 8. Saka, for Madison 7. Then on the bench, Matoma for 5. But lots of managers bench Matoma and Estupin. And so that's fine. Turner, Turner was on a lot of people's benches. Because most people preferred any other keeper to Turner. Because Turner was away to Chelsea. So that was a fair enough call. And of course I'm saying that because I did the same. So there I am. I'm down in 162nd in the league. I got 73 points. So not very good really. I think it's one above the global average. Haaland got 40. Most people had Haaland captain. Salah 8 and Bremo 8. Matoma 5. Saka 4. So I was looking at this afterwards trying to see where did I kind of lose my points because a lot of people I watched and am aware of got a few points more than me. And it's because most of them are playing five midfielders and you could pretty much choose any five half-decent midfielders that are popular and you'd have got points. But instead of five midfielders, I've got Jackson and Visser up front and they didn't do anything. However... I think in the coming game weeks, they may be all right. So uh, not a great game week, but that's okay. We're only on game week four. I've got a few more left yet, so that's not a problem. And on the bench, Turner for five, which most people had. And I'm very pleased that Bayer got minus one. Not pleased he got minus one, but I'm pleased that he was playing because he was flagged as probably injured. So I'm pleased that he's back. So now, as things stand, I've got a full functioning bench. So 73 points. Just inside the 5 million mark for the game week. 242 points overall. It's a red arrow, so I'm outside the 2 million. But we're early. I'm not nervous yet. So there I am. I'm 2 points to the wrong side of 2 million. 13 points to the wrong side of 1 million. 21 points to the wrong side of half a million. And yet, despite all that, there's 808 subscribers. Thank you very much for everyone who does watch this channel and watch these videos. It is very much appreciated. So in the FPL Game Week Content Creators League, if you go there, you see where you'd feature. And of the people that I like to watch or I'm aware of, FPL Fran is currently second. He's got 290 points. And if you remember, SS Top of Our League has got more than 290 points. So if they're a content creator, they'd be the second best content creator. However, Nathan Bacon FC FPL has used three of his chips. So... Arguably, SS would be the best content creator. There's FPL Fran. Very, very good to listen to. If I could only listen to one FPL, -er, it would probably be him. And then James Plan FPL. He's uh, down in sixth. He's used one of his chips already, but he's fun to listen to. He's very candid. I quite like listening to him. As for me, I'm all the way down in 56th on 242 points, which is two points behind Nima, who... Does a lot to do with the FPL meet. There's one in Manchester in a couple of weeks' time, which I may go to if I possibly can. But I am, what, one point ahead? No, more than one point. I'm seven points ahead of Az, which is nice. But it's so early, there's a lot of shuffling going to happen yet anyway. Now, my transfer options for my team. I've actually got two free transfers. So option number one, which is what I'm considering at the moment, is just do nothing which actually means I'll be burning a transfer. But I'm comfortable in playing my first 11 this coming game week anyway. So we have the international break. So there may be some injuries or news coming out. Possibly Salah 
we go to Saudi Arabia before the next game week, in which case I'm going to have to sell him. But at the moment, I'm currently thinking I won't actually do anything. So that means my team would line up as follows. I'd have Haaland would wear the old mule hat. Now he's away to West Ham, whereas my vice captain Salah is away to Wolves. And I think the difference between Liverpool and Wolves is bigger than the difference between Man City and West Ham. So I think there's a reasonable chance that Salah could outscore Haaland. However, most teams are going to be captaining Haaland, so I can't afford to not captain Haaland. So therefore, I captain Haaland. If it was split 50-50, I think I'd probably captain Salah though. Then I've got Turner at home to Burnley in goal. I expect a lot of people to do that. And I've got Trippier at home to Brentford. I bought Trippier a couple of weeks ago because Trent was injured. That was clearly a mistake because Trippier's done nothing and Trent's done rather well since then. However, um, probably people are going to start buying Trippier. So maybe I just got in there early. And there's always a chance he's going to get a return. I wouldn't expect a clean sheep against Brentford. However, there's a chance he'll get an assist. So I'm happy to keep him. And then playing against him is Embremo and Visser. Reasonably optimistic that they're going to get a goal or assist because Newcastle's defence really hasn't been very good this season. And then we've got Chilwell away to Bournemouth with his mate Jackson. They could get something. Saka away to Everton. Quite a good chance to get something. And then a Stupinan and Matoma away to Man United. Now, normally you might think, oh, that's a bad fixture. And if you look at the fixture ticker on the official website, I think it's red because, oh, that's a bad fixture. But why is that a bad fixture? Brighton are excellent at attacking and Man City just can't defend. They're awful. So if Brighton scored two or three goals, nobody should really be surprised at that. So that's my team as it lined up at the moment if I don't make any transfers. So on my bench, I'd have Pickford at home to Arsenal. And then three other boys who are all away and probably won't do very well. And in case you're wondering why the picture, well, we're on the international break now. And as you probably know, England is credited with inventing the game. And unsurprisingly, the first international game was between Scotland and England. And that was in 1872. So when was the last Scottish victory? Well, you pretty much have to go back to the Battle of Bannockburn, which was 1314. So this is the Battle of Bannockburn, and look at that, they're having a little friendly football match. Things got out of hand, and then it kind of went downhill from then. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a nice break from the FPL this weekend. Okay, see you later. Bye. <laughs>